Come in, sit down. Or leave. Hello everybody, um, thanks for coming. So th this session is intended to cover the Lenora stable kernel and uh, have a bit of a discussion about what we're doing, um, gather any feedback we can, let you guys know what's going on. Uh, my name's Mark Brown, I'm the technical lead for the stable kernel. So um, I have some slides here, but if anybody has any questions or feedback at any point, please just stick your hand up or interrupt and we'll take the discussion as we go. Okay. So the Lenora stable, uh, so, well, let's just start off with, there's an agenda, run through that. Um, so the Lenora stable kernel is and produce a product. So provide something that's uh, less fast-paced than the upstream kernel. You saw the statistics in the uh, keynotes this morning. So with the Lenora stable kernel, we're going to pick a kernel version, which will be one of the kernel.org long-term stable ver versions. We're going to backport any new developments that Lenora has done that are not present in that upstream kernel. And then we're going to provide support for that for an extended period of time. Currently, the plan is that the um, kernel will be getting new features for a year and then supported for an additional year beyond that. So, so the first question is, are you planning to carry on patches that are not going upstream? So the question was, are we planning to carry patches that are not going upstream? That's covered in a later slide. Okay. Uh, but the, ans the answer is uh, no, but yes, roughly. Um, so yeah, and yeah, as well as providing something that the members can use for their development, the other side of what LSK should be doing is taking the uh, taking the experience we gain, putting these features into products, and feeding them back into the development. The development isn't existing in a bubble; it's uh, getting some, getting useful feedback from things people are actually encountering in production. So hopefully, this will not just benefit the members doing stable deployments, it will also benefit the ongoing development of Lenora features. 
Um, so currently, we have a preview of the LSK, which is basically, uh, it's not going to be supported long term, but it's something that should look roughly like the shape of, the, uh, of what the LSK will be. It's currently based on kernel version 3.9. Um, the main focus of this version is big little support. So it's got the ARM beta patch set integrated, as well as platform enablement for VXpress TC2. The main purpose of the VXpress TC2 enablement is to provide a test bed for the, um, for the big little code and to provide something that we can use to uh, reproduce problems if anybody encounters them in production. Uh, there's also the Android uh, version of this kernel with the Android patch set integrated into it, um, so we can make sure that that's all integrated well, it works well. Uh, we have CI set up for this in Lava, and um, the plan of record at the minute is that the um, when we do a release, it will be not be based on version 3.9, it will be based on whatever the next uh, stable kernel release, or long-term stable kernel release, we should say, that Greg Koa Hartman does. Um, it's not clear if that's actually the final plan yet. That may change depending on what Greg decides to do and when Greg decides to do whatever he's doing. So, uh, and of course, what the members need. But that's the current plan of record. Um, are there, is there any chance that there would be a 3.4 uh, three kernel that Greg takes long, longer? Um, so that's um, one of the things that's, so that's, uh, there is a chance, how big a chance that it, uh, so the question was, will there be a 3.4 kernel if Greg doesn't uh, decide to do a long-term stable kernel? Um, there's a chance that that could happen. Um, the, that's not the only option that's out there, though. Another option is that Lenaro takes on the responsibility of doing what Greg does for whatever kernel version Lenaro decides uh, suits its members. Uh, it's also possible that somebody other than Greg will take on the long-term stable kernel for a kernel version that Lenaro is interested in. So we may be following a long-term stable kernel that's not Greg's. Uh, and it's also possible that um, we may decide to just wait for Greg to do something. But then that's um, up in the air, and it's really a TSC decision, uh, what we go with. Uh, the other factor there, of course, is what Google do with Android. Uh, because a lot, uh, especially with Big Little, a lot of the interest is in uh, is in deploying smartphones. So if Google decides to do something, maybe the decision will be to follow what Google have done. Uh, proposed features going forward. There's a lot of people who are interested in deploying a stable kernel on their ARMv8 platforms. Um, we also plan to expand the testing we're doing to cover things that don't actually use any of the LSK features, but uh, just in order to make sure that the LSK is working well for them. So currently, we're looking at doing that for Panda and for Highbank, because those are well-supported in mainline and already available in Lava. So it should be very, very easy to enable those. Um, some other features that have been um, mentioned, but which aren't as cards in um, Jira yet. Uh, transparent huge pages and virtualization are interesting to the um, LEG and maybe some other people. The LNG have uh, mentioned the RT patch set, some of that maybe, um, but uh, aren't just pulling faces at me right now. Um, so there, we need to, uh, that hasn't really been explored with the LNG yet, what exactly they need there, and uh, whether it's better for, them, uh, for us to go to the, whatever the RT patch that is on or, whether, or what we do there. That, that's a, a feature that's potentially in the pipeline. And I don't know if there are any other requirements. Anyone wants to share it? I guess Big Endian. Uh, Big Endian, yes, that uh, seems likely for the LNG as well. Uh, so, uh, could you maybe grab the microphone, because I don't think anybody at the back of the room can hear what you're talking about. There, there's one just... Uh, NUMA, non-uniform, because I've yeah. seen some 32-bit patches for the NUMA. 
I'm not sure what is the plan for 30, uh, 64 bit. So, yeah. So, uh, as Arndt says, um, new hardware I'm aware of, uh, new request I'm aware of. Um, if that's a request, or you know, if that's something that's interesting right. to people, then right. um, that request should be made. But <laughs> it's yeah. not. So, Catlin's saying that. So yeah, so Catlin saying the the NUMA patches may be interesting for um, other applications uh, rather than just NUMA. But again, uh, that's not something anybody's mentioned before. But again, it's something we could anything is something we, uh, we could look at if there is sufficient demand and it's not technically infeasible for some reason. But I guess the most important part would be new platform support that gets added into later kernels and backported to the stable. Kernel. Maybe um, so. It's. Possible that people will want to use the LSK directly with no modification, in which case um, they will want to have their platform enablement in the LSK. However, another model that um, a lot of the software vendors are interested in is that they take the LSK, put their platform enablement on top of it, and whatever else they want to do and release that as their, um, as their kernel to their customers. So it's not clear that there, there, there's actually dem demand to do that in the LSK. Um, the main reason that's obviously things like um, interesting graphics drivers or whatever that um, nobody wants to see the light of day in mainline, but uh, vendors want to support or just hack, you know, platform specific optimizations they want to do that uh, aren't generic enough to go into mainline. But graphics drivers is an interesting point. Like the Lima driver or the Free Geno, they, they could. Yeah, I mean, yes, that, that's definitely something. If, if people request, if the TSC approves it, then yeah, we could we could definitely do that. And drivers should be relatively straightforward to port. Um, it's not uh, the stuff that's up there at, at the minute. Think, things like uh, Big Little, in particular, really goes into the core kernel in a fairly invasive way. So um, that's a, that's a quite a big deal to port, to backport. Whereas things like drivers are relatively cheap and easy to carry, normally. Any um, other suggestions? Or, yep. Just kind of a, I think I missed the first couple of minutes. I'm sorry. Has the discussion come up in terms of like uh, the versioning of the branches? Or I, I know we have different flavors. Can you, has, has it been defined what the flavors mean? Um, so at the, at the minute we have, um, I, I touched on it briefly. So at the minute we have a core LSK uh, in the preview release. We have a core LSK, which is everything except Android, and then we uh, then we have another um, release, uh, which is that that branch with the Android patch set merged into it because the Android patch set fiddles with things that not everybody wants. Um, so no, it's not quite been defined. That, I think that will just fall out of the feature sets we get asked for. So if there are obvious conflicts, so for example, the big little patch set touches the scheduler in interesting ways. So people who have pure RV8 system who don't have any uh, have to worry about big little might not be enthusiastic about taking the big little scheduler changes. So we'll probably have to produce a separate kernel version for big little and a separate kernel version for RV8. Shouldn't they be like independent of each other? I mean, if you turn off the configuration for the big little scheduler, then if if the, if the patch set is written um, that we end up with in the and that kernel version is written sufficiently well for that to happen, yeah, that would be fine. If it's turned off the blink configuration, then it's no problem. What, what's, uh, what's the impact on that? And what you're asking to test? What configurations can you test? So the question was, what configurations do we test at the minute? We test on the Express TC2 um, with um, between one and four processors for the scheduler testing, and with the full, uh, sorry, two and eight processors with the uh, for the scheduler testing. And um, we plan to also add Panda and Highlight to that test loop. Um, I think the plan for ARMV initially is to use the fast model for testing. But uh, that's going to be a combination. It's, the, the basic idea is that we will do testing on a combination of at least enough to actually exercise all the features, because that's kind of important, 
and anything else that's in And of course, if we run into issues in production, then we'll try and add in test cases into the uh, into Lava to make sure that we've got good coverage of those. So initially, I mean, like I had a question as to uh, you know why we had several branches, like because there's only one kernel, right? There's not yeah. There's no RT, um, but now I think it's a little bit more clear why there are different branches because Android or preempt can just not cannot go along together in one kernel. Yeah. Understand and, that, and we and we also have top, uh, so, and there's also topic branches for the inputs to the kernel, which I will come on to in the, the process slide uh, later. So the idea is that people provide um, whoever it is is providing the backport will provide a backport on a branch that will be reviewed, and then that will be merged in. So those branches are there more for um, review than for actual use. Although if somebody uh, you know maybe use the QA for example to look at only the topic branch. So is it at least narrowed down to a distribution, like all Android products will be testing on this particular branch, all Open Embedded will be testing on this particular branch, or no? Um, yeah, but so the idea is we have as few branches as possible, as much as possible that can uh, play nicely with each other. We'll go into the core LSK release, um, then anything like the RT patches are another example that doesn't, uh, that doesn't necessarily play nicely, or which maybe does play nicely, but um, people get nervous when they do the code review to convince themselves that it plays nicely. Uh, we'll go into a separate um, release, which the people who need that release can pick, uh, can pick up. I mean, with things like the Android patch set, for example, it's not really doing, it's just the Google patch set with a few bug fixes merged in. It's not really doing anything interesting in itself, but it's useful from a QA point of view to say, yeah, we have actually tried Big Little running on, and, uh, on Android, done some testing on it, and it doesn't explode horribly. When you do the testing, do you think there will have to be multiple ARMv7 builds of the same source tree? Or will it have will you be able to have one kernel binary that works on Panda, High Bank, and TC2? Um, the goal is to minimize the num uh, number of things we do. I think at the minute, Lava is set up to do separate testing mm -hmm. um, due to the way Lava is set up. Yeah. Um, we, um, Adding support for testing multi-platform would, of course, be uh, useful. And for ARMv8, it's obviously definitely where we want to go. But um, I'm not sure to what extent anybody actually cares about multi-platform testing um, for ARMv7. Uh, we should probably do it if it's doable, though. It's well, the more coverage, the better. Those platforms are the ones that are best supported on multi-platform at the moment. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it should work. I mean, um, I would expect that the result of any such testing would be, yes, that works. Mm. Uh, but we should probably get coverage equally well. Like I say, I'm not sure how much anybody really, really cares. Yeah. No, I, th I thought it was just to minimize the number of different builds you do from the same source code because that ends up adding complexity. Uh, yeah, I think I, my understanding of the way Lava is set up is that it's easier to do. You have the test on the thing that runs, so the kernel build is just part of the overall test. Um, but I may be misinformed. So Grant thinks the kernel build has been done by Jenkins, Fatty? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, the, the, the kernel build is that you can build by 679 configurations yeah. from one kernel. Hey, Grant, do you want to take the microphones? <laughs> Well, I, I shouldn't be talking about it. Patsy should be talking about it. <laughs> well, just whoever speaking wants to take a microphone. Yeah. So, here, go ahead. Yeah, so the kernel build are done on uh, Jenkins. We have one, one source tree. Uh, most likely for this case, it's uh, LSK. And, and then we, we, we select just a, a kernel configuration that we are going to use. So right now, we use uh, the config for uh, SATA Express of TC2. Uh, nothing prevents to move to a multi-platform uh, TV7 dev config if it works. Um, I think <laughs> it doesn't work, it probably should. Well, yeah. the, I think the more interesting work that actually needs to be done to do multi-platform testing is figure out how to do a multi-platform hardware pack. And right now, we don't think we've got Linaro Media Create set up to do that. Yeah, yeah. and 
the other question is, is, um, is this something that's relevant for the um, LST or is this something that's relevant for the upstream testing? Uh, I mean, we should probably run the testing yeah. on LST, but whether it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's something the, that people the, actually care about on LST is a separate question. Lava is currently set up uh, to use Linear Media Create for doing the test images. Yeah. It doesn't have to do that, but that's just the way that yeah, we're doing yeah. things. Well, it, as uh, Mark said, it's not relevant for uh, uh, LSK, it's just our internal um, cooking. It's, it's lava. Um, right now, we we know exactly what uh, what hardware platform we are targeting. So when we create a hardware pack, uh, we know already what uh, what device we are going to use, and that's exactly the same way for lava. So when we run a test on, on lava, we are going to say we run um, the test on this platform. Um, so yeah, we need we need to get rid of, of that the, yeah. that assumption. I, I think that work probably makes more sense as well within the leg context, because the leg's going to want to get to the point of building, you know, building the LSK or whatever kernel we, we happen to be using into an image, yeah. and then that image will be tested on multiple platforms. Yeah. So once we've got that in leg, then it makes sense to bring it over to LSK testing. Yeah. So yeah, we, we should we should get as much test coverage as possible. Yeah. Um, even I mean. So some of it's going to be more valuable than other bits, but um, so yeah. It's, yeah, just one last comment. It's a bit off topic, but um, uh, we need also to discuss with um, on the bootloader side. Basically, when when we use your boot today and you will find tomorrow, um, it's also uh, targeted for one other platform, and there's no way to select um, the device tree based on uh, the kernel that we have. Uh, of course, the device tree should be static and date into the hardware anyway. Well, we'll, we'll need to make it in the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ian has, the, um, Ian's put together a tree since last connect that's got all the device tree stuff split out. Uh, that work needs to, it's stalled just from lack of effort, but uh, that needs to that needs to actually happen and device tree not be baked into the kernel tree. There was really good pra pragmatic reasons why we did that years ago, but the time has passed. It needs to be split out. Yeah. So um, some of the questions earlier touched on uh, process. That slide, which hopefully you can all read, I'm not sure how this will actually is the back of my experience previously, um, is a very, very high level overview of it. Um, the LSK is going to track whatever the stable kernel uh, release that we're tracking is doing. So the best possible way to get any change you want into LSK is to get it into the kernel.org stable kernel, um, especially for any sort of bug fixing stuff yeah, just in the generic kernel. Um, this not only means no linear processes involved, um, it also means that anybody who's picking up that stable kernel is going to get the fix. So obviously not everybody running kernels on ARM is going to be running the LSK. Some people will be doing their own thing for whatever reasons. Um, so, they, so if you get your changes into the um, kernel or stable kernel, then that will have the maximal impact. So anybody who is doing bug fix work on the kernel, um, look at what you're doing, have a think about it. Do you want to tag it stable at kernel uh, Actually, I would phrase it a little bit different. If you have a bug fix that you know applies to an older kernel, just tag it as stable, whether you think it's going to be needed or not. Uh, yes, that, that was the, yeah. Um, although it does depend somewhat on how invasive and risky the change is, I know I have not back some changes people do that on, because yes, that is a bug, bug in the older kernel, but on the other hand, nobody was complaining, and it could affect people other than you. Right. If a, if a patch apply, uh, matches the rules for the stable kernel, then it yeah. should be even, even if it does, some of them you may be a bit conservative about. Yeah. Um, just because you know, stable kernel, you want people to take it without having to think. So if there's any doubt at all, then mm -hmm. it's probably better not to. But yes, in general, if it's a bug fix and it will apply to, the, to a stable kernel, you should probably be tagging it for stable. Uh, gets the maximum benefit for your fix. Um, 
But um, as well as the kernel.org stable kernels, we'll also be having uh, well, the backports of features, so big, little, v, whatever else we uh, end up adding. Um, the goal there is that these should be placed on topic uh, or submitted as topic branches. We'll, uh, on the stable kernel team, we'll then review them, mostly with a view to um, how sensible they are to backport. Um, although, obviously, if you find any other issues, that's um, that's good. The stuff that's going to the Linara stable kernel should be tracking upstream development somehow. So ideally, that will be something that's already been merged into the latest and greatest mainline Linux, and it's just not available in this uh, path version of Linux, in which case it should be tagged with commit IDs from uh, Linux's tree. Um, but there will be some things that um, that's not going to happen for. So for example, at the minute, Big Little, we are currently using the beta patch set from ARM. Um, that is vanishingly unlikely to go into uh, mainline in its current form. So um, for things like that, we want to know where the development of that uh, code, if it's con uh, continuing to be developed, is happening. Uh, and we want to know who to contact if there's um, something we need advice on. But in general, there's a very, very strong preference for something that's in mainline or in review for mainline or, as a last resort, not going into mainline but an equivalent feature is going into mainline. How do you prevent companies from developing against your release branch? How do we prevent companies developing against our release branch? We, we don't. Uh, we say we then say, ah, you have sent us a pull request against our release branch uh, for something that's not been approved by the TSC. Sorry. Uh, all, all, all features added to the LSK are, need to be approved by the TSC. So that's the first block. Is if it's not, if it's not uh, approved by the TSC, then uh, it will not get accepted. And hopefully the TSC will then as part of uh, producing the car, that will be, it'll be specified that it should be coming from somewhere like the actual LTS kernel. So my, my experience even with R. Oh, yes. Yeah. So my experience with uh, Linaro kernels, which, I mean, they do, they do good, good integration work, is that people tend to develop against them. Yep. Send some patches to Linaro landing team, and people forget about them because they said, okay, Linaro is taking care of them from now on. So um, I think you need to prevent that because people may send some patches and you, you don't know who the owner was or who to contact you, initially. You, you, you can't prevent that. What you need to do is um, when somebody sends you a patch like that, you say no. And then you say no to them. And if they're surprised that it doesn't materialize, uh, and you tell them what they need to do instead. And if they're then surprised that it doesn't materialize somewhere in the, the support kernel, then you point them to the place where you said, no, this is not going in because it's not doing, it's not dotting the eyes across the teeth. So I think I mean, you, you can't stop it. The code is out there. Yeah. You cannot stop somebody doing that. You just need to. Uh, yeah, just don't get that into do. LSK. Hmm? You, you need to make them own the code that they wrote until it goes into mainline. Yes. Rather than they decide, okay, LSK is the owner of my code now. I no longer care. Yes, well, they, they can decide that all they like, but we will tell them that's not happening if probably we even know that they've done this. So, you know, it's just a question of you need, if. Trying to give you, uh, say, you own this now, then either we have to say, yes, okay, that's fair enough, you have, that's a perfectly sensible and reasonable thing to do, we do own it, or we have to say, no, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we ha uh, the main thing there is we have to give people an answer. Um, there's a couple of questions at the back. Uh, or one, half of, yeah, day back first, and then there's another question at the back. So, my comment on that. Related, related to sort of the landing team is, I mean, this is more of an internal conversation we need to have is, there's nothing that's going to stop if, if um, the agreement that we have between landing team and a member is that we're going to take a bunch of their patches and build something on, on top of LSK. There's nothing that's going to stop the landing teams and the member companies from taking LSK and putting a bunch of out of tree patches that are not good quality in there and then saying this is something that we're shipping. I mean, that's something that you're going to have to be ready for is getting people giving, you know, people coming back to you and saying, well, this thing is broken and it has a bunch of extra patches on top of LSK. So we'd have cool. a really strict policy there of like, we'll only, we'll only deal with bugs that only happen on LSK by itself. Anything above on top of it, it's not. Uh, yes, most, uh, we do, um, 
we do at least need to cope with working out whether this is something in LSK. Uh, and it may be that this is something actually in the generic kernel and we should probably backwards fix anyway because it's reasonable. I mean, realistically, I don't think anybody is going to be using LSK unmodified, at least not in the uh, first few releases. Uh, it's possible that that will change as the LNG gets more speed. But um, realistically, I think, say, we only support things actually running on LSK. Uh, by the way, you need a VXpress TC2. No, they're not cheap, uh, but you need a VXpress TC2 to report a bug to us. If that's uh, People will laugh at us if we try and say that. So uh, we, we, yes, in principle, but uh, realistically, that's not quite such a hard policy as that. Um, and we should probably be helpful to people anyway. So there's another question right at the back. So a year from now, who's going to be responsible for forward reporting items that are in the current LSK? That will be decided using whatever uh, process Lenaro uses for working out who does things. Uh, at that time, I don't. I mean, the, you know, we 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 will cross that bridge when we get to it. I think. Uh, the the ideal answer is that um, because of Lenaro's excellent record at upstreaming code. Um, all the features in the current LSK will, of course, be in mainline, and therefore there is nothing to forward report, and um, uh, nobody needs to be assigned to do that work. Um, how close to that corresponds to reality is, of course, a separate question. Uh, yeah. I just to chime in here. I think you are going to need a policy fairly quickly on what that should look like, mm -hmm. um, and I think it should be something along the lines: if you if it's still not in mainline. And you have your patches in an older version of it. Okay, it's the Correct. it's that group's responsibility to make sure it gets to the next. So yeah, Grant's um, proposal is that it's whoever wrote the patches in the first place. Um, this is less work for me. I think this is a brilliant idea. No, I I no I I I do agree with you, but. Um, I, um, you, we, we would need probably need to look at it on a case by case basis. I mean, it may be that the that group doesn't exist anymore, or that was only throwaway around. Doesn't exist anymore. They the patch. <laughs> well, or but you know, maybe it was a special project that was you know, uh, you know, somebody set up uh, set up a group to do implement support for the wonderful new feature that Arm are just going to release soon. Um, that's yeah. implemented. They then go away. Yeah, and there's nothing to say that you can't relax your policy on case by case basis, yeah. but still have the policy. That's otherwise, you're just going to be yeah. stuck in the pain. No, that, that, that's what the having an owner, uh, if it's not upstream, having an owner assigned for it is all about. I mean, if, if, it's, if we can track it into upstream, then I think it's reasonable for the LSK people to take responsibility of it uh, for keeping it uh, up to date. Um, and similarly, it's our responsibility if we're doing any bug fixes on top of the uh, LSK to uh, make sure those bug fixes go into mainline. Well, you, could, you could actually be stricter than that and have a default policy that says, uh, by the time feature gets added to LSK, you need to set a kernel release by which you want to have it upstream. If it's not upstream, by then you need extra TFC approval to keep it in LSK and, and not have a problem. Uh. I, yeah, I, well, I, I think the, the TSC needs, I can't really set that policy, the TSC needs to set it, but I mean, that is kind of the policy. So the, the, poli uh, you know, the policy is we will accept stuff that is upstream, anything that is not, uh, not even you know, targeted for upstream, we will accept stuff that's upstream, anything else, um, we, uh, we need to have a discussion about what's going on with that. I mean, we, we can't just accept anything that's been submitted upstream because uh, upstream may look at it, run away in horror, and mock the people sending it, and that doesn't really. Ca yes, that has been submitted upstream, but realistically, it's not going to get merged. Yeah. But you don't have a policy of removing stuff at the moment if it doesn't get upstream in time. Well, that that would defeat the purpose of a long-term stable kernel. Yeah. Um, okay. It, no. Now, I, I assume you're talking about. Well, wait. Are you talking about removing it from a stable kernel we've already released, or are you yes. talking about? The next jump that we yeah, do to a new kernel version. From the, doing the revert on the current stable kernel. A, a bad idea. idea. I, I do. Uh, unless it's causing problems, okay. I, yeah. that would defeat the purpose of a long term stable. And I, th I think commercially that would just be not happening. Um, 
I mean, um, nobody's going to say uh, the current big little patch set doesn't look like it's going upstream right now. Uh, ah, who cares about big little CPUs? They're not important. You know, no, nobody's going to say that. So th th we will have to uh, continue to support things, both from a it's what people want from a stable kernel and from a people actually want these features. It, it's already a fairly high bar to get into uh, LST in the first place. So. I would consider it relatively unlikely that anybody would uh, lose interest in the feature and decide we didn't have Oops. And on, on this note, and also touching the, uh, the thing you've mentioned a couple of minutes ago, that maybe this group will not exist in a year's time. Um, well, after in the three years of the narrow existence, I've already seen three or four different flavors of the narrow kernels with different approaches and so on and so on. And I don't think I'm really expecting any answer, but how likely it is that this group will survive in the next one or two or three years? Yes, and not at the same time. As I say, first year it was Nico's kernel, right? There was pretty much was supposed to do what we are talking about right now. Then Nico's kernel uh, disappeared, and the tracking kernel appeared when we saw every single month new update and so on and so on. Then this one disappeared because the uh, evaluation bill disappeared. And um, you know what I mean. I, I think uh, that's going to be determined by member adoption. Uh, if nobody starts using the LSK, then it's going to die. Uh, if people start using the LSK, then there's going to be some demand for it to stick around. Um, at the minute, we haven't done a release. Um, I, maybe we have people using the uh, preview release, but they really, really shouldn't rely on it. It's not actually a long-term stable kernel. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that's the answer. Is just uh, is somebody using it? If so, it'll probably stick around. Yeah. But then, if if you're not promising to to have it stick around for a long time, people might not. Yeah, stop well, using we, it. we 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 are promising to have it stick around, but at the minute. Yeah. But um, realistically, if if so, if the there is no adoption, then uh, we're not going to have peop a bunch of engineers sitting around uh, doing work for no uh, nobody. Uh, I'm sure uh, people would start complaining the why are we spending our money on the LSK when we could be doing something else. Uh, if people are using it, then that's going to be different. I'm just wondering whether there shouldn't be a uh, initial. I'm just wondering whether there shouldn't be an initial commitment. Pick it, pick it. Twelve months, twenty-four well, months. That, that, we guarantee that there will be. No, that, that 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 is what's uh, that, that and that is what's on record at the minute. What's on record at the minute is initial commitment of twelve months for development of the um, stable kernel, and then an additional 12 months of bug fix only support. Okay. Um, Two years. Yeah. And of course, that you know, if there was actually no use of it, then the bug level of bug fixes needed would be small. But okay. There's a question for the back. Uh, I can share. What's the availability for this? Members versus members. Uh, uh, it, it's on record. It's uh, the preview releases are part of the standard Linaro release. The um, actual releases will be part of the standard Linaro re release. Um, if there were um, if there were requests for many, but at the minute everything is on uh, git.linaro.org and releases.linaro.org. There is um, nothing that isn't public. Is it support model? Is it support models for members or anything like that? I suspect members will get uh, more assiduous support, but we're not going to we're not going to ignore bug reports uh, because you know um, maybe you've noticed something that members going to notice in a few months, and it would be better to fix it for um, now. On the other hand, members have priority because. I mean, let me answer that question because I actually work with the LGS, so members and four members will get heard or report about the improvement as well, I'm sure. Um, Mark, what will be your initial focus for LSK? Uh, like, you will be supporting Android or like for every kernel, like LAG also, LNG also? Or initial focus for the LSK will be only for Android? How's that? Um, so, so the initial um, demand is for Android. Um, LNG are still, uh, you know, the, the only. Set up, I think maybe two months ago. Uh, so LNG are very early, are very early stages, uh, and LEG. The um, LEG isn't. 
the LEG is primarily focused on people who want to use uh, the distributions. Um, the model that the distributions have is that they sell support um, and they do the kernel. Um, so it's questionable um, how much the LEG will use um, the LSK directly, although the, pack, the back porting that, the L, uh, that we do for the LSK may be an important part of what the distros pick up. Um, that fundamentally, the distros because, want to own yeah, this because, because this is their yeah, product. Right. Because I've seen some of the features you're trying to merge from LEG as well as LNG group, for example, RT patches and use TLB. Just so. Yeah. So, so, you, so you want to pick up like all the things, all the features from? We, we want, we, uh, so the, the goal is to... will be only on Android, yeah. Uh, no, no. The, the, um, I, th I expect that to be the, uh, certainly initially, I expect that to be the primary u uh, users for the LSK. However, I suspect there will be demand for us to help out with supporting uh, other things. I mean, it, fundamentally, the decisions are taken by the TSC. It's a resource allocation decision done at the TSC level. So um, it's not, it, it's directed by what members need. If members are saying, uh, we need LEG features in the LSK, there will be LEG features in the LSK. Right now, the major demand is for Android stuff, so that's what's happening right now. But in six months' time, uh, maybe the focus will be entirely on LNG. Maybe the focus will be entirely on LNG. Maybe it will be on some other group that's not yet announced. Okay, so if I understand, every feature will be merged Okay, so if I understand, every feature will be merged after TSC approval. Is that correct? Features merged into the LSK will be merged after the TSC has approved them. Not every feature will be in the LSK, I would expect. So, for, for example, multi-platform support for RMB7, uh, I'm not sure there's a great demand for that to be backported. So that's something I would consider unlikely to uh, turn up in the LSK. Okay, okay. Just, just one more. I just want to understand from my point of view. Like, let's say landing team, they want to submit some patches. For example, I want to add the SATA support. So right now, my reference is the Linaro kernel visit. That's yep. maintained by Andre. So how that SATA patches will end up in the LSK? Just want to understand the process from um, so the SATA patches will, of course, have been submitted upstream and be merged there. Um, somebody will then uh, decide that those should be in the LSK. Um, then the patches will be backported by somebody to be determined. Uh, probably the landing team in this case, and submitted to the LSK. They'll be reviewed to the LSK, and they'll turn up in the LSK after testing, of course. Um, I would expect most uh, the the good general goal. So the question was, will the landing team have to do the testing? I would expect the landing team to do testing during the process of producing the backport. Um, but I would not. I, I would expect almost all of the testing to the, of the LSK to be um, automated regression testing. Uh, I wouldn't expect um, somebody to actually have to manually sit down and run tests uh, all the time. That would seem like um, an enormous waste of people's time. Uh, um, so, some testing, but not all of it. Olaf. So I'm, I'm probably hearing three needs here. One is LSK that has the base support. It has big little. It has I think we can hear all. <laughs> You're loud enough. Nobody else, I guess nobody else can hear me online. Um, so you have sort of three needs. One is the base support, which has big, little, and the common features and all that stuff. Then you have the landing team kernels, which contains you know all the junk drivers, okay, um, for platforms to make them run, and you know all the stuff that's integrated. And then you have, I guess, on top of that, you also have Android bits. Yeah. So I sort of hear a mixed message here. You want to provide the base kernel that has, you know, common functionality, but I also hear requests. People want drivers in there. Um, do you envision that this will sort of take over? Are the landing teams going to use this as a base for their work and have their drivers on top, or do you think they're all going to merge it into here? Um, I would hope that the landing teams are using uh, mainline as the base for their work. Um, however, people are going to be using this to ship, or the goal is that people are going to be using this to ship products. So wh uh, whether, whether that's the landing teams doing that, or whether that's the um, people within the SOC vendors doing that, um, 
or indeed their end customers. Um, that's open for discussion. It'll depend on what people require. I mean, maybe that the soft vendors are perfectly happy to keep their own patch sets on top of LSK and don't particularly want to go to the trouble of, um, of I think there, there is um, some substantial benefit from that. Uh, for example, they may uh, want to make sure that the LSK has been tested and validated on their platform before we release it. So they therefore need to pr contribute enough um, enablement to get that uh, to get it at least running well enough to do the validation. Um, I, I can answer this. Um, I, I would expect a bit of both. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I also expect that there will be a point where um, there will be new development on new SOCs that won't become publicly available and that the members will have it inside and working on it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the current model for all the, all the current expected users is that they're working in-house and they're not, they don't have any particular intention of uh, mainlining what they're doing. Um, I don't know whether that that's quite true, but... Uh, well, it, it, uh, cer certainly not... They're cer certainly not going to start announcing their, code or their, their SOCs before they're ready. Yeah, uh, and, and they're um, most likely also going to be productizing prior to getting it mainlined or at the, at, the ver at the very earliest at the same time. Yes. Uh, there, will, there will be probably be product shipping uh, well before the mainlining is anywhere near to complete. How do you expect to deal with the overlap between your work and the work that Greg is doing on the industry long-term stable kernel? Do you want to uh, look at what he's putting in there or do you talk at all? Um, so I haven't um, spoken to Greg because um, currently, uh, oh, to be frank, if if we turned around to uh, if if to if somebody turned around, I was in Greg's shoes, and somebody turned around to me and said, uh, "Please produce a a, a a long term stable kernel based on this kernel version." Uh, my first response would be, "Thank you for volunteering," uh, which is not the direction we want to go in, apparently. So. No, my, my, you, you mean the, the LTSI? Greg also puts in the Android patches and the well, probably the, the big little patches and platform bring up for certain SOCs, which is... You, you, mean, you mean LTSI, not the... Uh, uh, yeah, LTSI, sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we don't, um, we don't have a particular official uh, policy on that. The people don't want to use LTSI uh, directly for some reason that I've not yet been able to determine? I can answer that a little bit. Um, I did, when we started doing the LSK stuff, I, I looked at LTSI a little bit, did some research, and the, the issue with LTSI was that LTSI doesn't really have any sort of clear release model. It seemed like it was we release when we feel like it and when we yeah. pick a random update. Whereas my understanding, what we want to do with LSK is basically every time Greg does a new release, we piggyback on top of that and update our release. Well, if we went on top of LTSI, we wouldn't be quite getting the stability of releases that we get yeah. with Greg's tree. And there's also things going to LTSI that we may not want and our, our members may not want in the tree. Yeah. Also, L LTSI um, doesn't have a Git tree. It has a forest of patch queues, which is kind of hard to work with. Um, so my... At the minute, um, the LTSI kernel version and our kernel version uh, don't line up with each other in the slightest, so it's not really an issue. Uh, my broad plan for that is to just submit everything that's in the LSK to LTSI um, and then let Greg or, you know, worry about it in LTSI, um, which will also get all the work we're doing in LSK to the maximum number of people, which is um, good and all. Yeah, that um, good. But that's currently not an issue. Well, off. Are you planning on testing LTSI then? Um, That's all I have. You don't need to try it. <laughs> I, um, again, it's because it's not um, in any way, shape, or form lined up with what we're doing at the minute. Um, no, uh, we probably should. I mean, we should probably also be testing the kernel.org stable releases directly. Uh, If you're sending code to LTSI, you should probably... Test oh, yeah, it. yes, we should probably test anything we send to LTSI, but that's just a plan for in the future, if there's a conflict, then that's probably the sensible way to deal with it. However, I have no plan to do that in the minute, therefore I have no plan to test anything because there's nothing to test, I haven't done anything. 
Yeah. No, my, my question was purely about the stage when both LTSI and LSK are based on the next stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and at that point, I think, like I say, I think the sensible way to deal, deal with it is just to submit everything to uh, LTSI and then uh, deal with it in there. Okay. Um, that way, I mean, our, our branches should be relatively independent, um, and LTSI seems to have a fairly open and accepting model for what it will take. Yeah, and then the, the beauty is that all the Linaro members will know that the stuff that we're doing is fully tested, and they can also take the LTSI kernel if they need an additional feature and get the same stuff. Yes, or just pick up all the individual branch from the LTSI kernel. Um. As we learned uh, from Google, um, actually they, they said uh, their com .bit will be, uh, like the Android kernel version will be aligned with the Linux stable kernel. So, um, so how, will, how can Google take advantage of this uh, LSK? Um, so, so what Google actually, uh, so what Google are, are producing a bunch of things. They're producing um, the Android um, patch set that um, they seem to do for every kernel version pretty much. Uh, not quite, John says, but um, it's, there's um, a lot of them. We're recently in preparation for a stable kernel. Yeah. Doing more um, but once a stable kernel is Pro probably, yeah, although uh, whether they continue to just keep it forward ported anyway just uh, for testing. Certainly, they're, they're, um, they, they, tend, they tend not to do the forward porting after a stable release is made. Uh, they, that's yeah. something that we've done inside of Lenaro for a number of times, but usually before a stable release, they start kind of preparing, yeah. preparing and they will make a number of them. So. Yeah, and it, it does depend how closely spaced the stable releases are as well right. um, and how busy they are with other stuff. Um, but yeah, so our plan is to base on... Greg's stable release. If that happens to be a stable release that Google pick as well, uh, then there is no conflict. All is well. Uh, we're all using the same stuff. We can just merge everything. Um, the other thing, of course, that Google are releasing is kernels for specific devices. They have uh, talked about the idea of um, making sure that the Android user space ABI is stable enough to allow them to run um, older kernel uh, or run different kernel versions of the same Android release. So they may not be um, keeping everything, um, keeping all their kernels up, um, up to the latest version like they have done in the past. Um, but yeah, if, if, they're, uh, if they're using the kernel.org long-term stable release, there's no conflict. It's all the same kernel. It should just merge fine. We're going to test that merge. It uh, should be fine. Uh, if they do something different, then we'll have to look at what they've done that's different and worry about it then. Um, we're starting to run out of time, by the way, so take one question. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it possible to maintain uh, the LSK uh, as a members only access if TSC uh, decided? It's technically possible. I mean, there's no barrier to doing that. Um, however, that's not the current plan uh, unless we add any members-only features, uh, at which point we wouldn't be discussing it here, of course. But Thank you. Um, so we have uh, one minute, so I think we should wrap it up there. Um, so um, thank you for your attention. Uh, if anybody has anything else they'd like to discuss, um, You've all seen me. Uh, come and find me. Talk to me. Um, and otherwise, yep, thanks for your attention. And uh, I look forward to seeing your patches.